Today News Update. This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, June 9. So glad you could join us. A move by the National Cultural Foundation to crown a junior Bashment Soka monarch has drawn much debate. Some suggest Bashman Soka is not for children, but Chief Executive Officer Carol Roberts Reefer urges the public not to rush to judgment. For us to think that if we don't have it in Junior Monarch, that the, our young people, that our children, given all of the tools and devices at their disposal, will not only not be exposed to it, but will not use it creatively then you know we, we really have to to wheel and come again because if it's not school sports if it's not on TikTok, if it is not on snapchat and all the other portals where people are putting up videos of themselves doing any variety of things it will happen there as well so and if there is any entity supremely capable of getting our young people and harnessing their creativity in a positive way, it is the National Cultural Foundation. She stressed the NCF already has a full plan in place to manage the process. It is not that they are going to create the song that they want and submit it when they want, and they are then just allowed to compete with it. There is a mentorship process. There is a um, production and training process. There is a social skills and development process. All of those components are built into the Junior Monarch program this year. So I just, just ask for a little indulgence. Give us a couple of weeks and see what we, what we come up with um, lyrically layered on top of what is a basic bashment rhythm. The Who's Who's of Barbados cricket turned out to pay their final respects to one of the island's cricketing icons, David Holford. Holford, a founding member of Cricket Legends of Barbados, a former captain of the Barbados cricket team, and a former member of the West Indies selection panel, died on May 30th at the age of 82. In a tribute to his younger brother, Kenneth Holford said he was devastated by the loss of his beloved brother as he read a farewell poem. God saw you were tired, and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, Please come to me. With terrible eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Here by that, although we love you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart shot beating, hard working hands at rest, and God broke our hearts to prove to us that He only takes the best. Delivering the eulogy, former Cricket Association executive Philip Nichols described Holford as an outstanding man. David was the ultimate professional by his deep knowledge of cricket, his calm approach to the game at any level, the manner in which he played himself, whether as a batsman or a bowler. He, be he appeared to have planned beforehand every move that he made and was never flustered when he did not get the expected results. When that happened, he simply dug deeper into his cricketing brain and came up with another strategy. His adoption and application of the basics of the game to his batting, bowling, and fielding was fantastic. He added no frills to his cricket. He applied the pure basics to cricket. I had the greatest respect for David as a cricketer and a human being. God bless his soul. Global supply chain challenges are hurting local manufacturers. According to President of the Barbados Manufacturing Association, John Marshall, it's a mess right now and securing orders for equipment and raw material is a big challenge. Supply chain right now is a mess. Uh, if you ask me today, I might give it a 5 out of 10. By 2 o'clock this afternoon, it might be a 4 out of 10. It changes on a regular basis. Um, you know, We have conversations with our vendors across the world every single day and most equipment suppliers now will give you a minimum of a one-year delivery for new uh, production equipment. 
uh, raw material suppliers are expecting you to place orders six months in advance and you know they want their terms cut uh, to lower their raising prices and if you can't pay them on time or pay the price that they want they'll sell it somewhere else because it, the global demand is such that they can they can do that marshall called for caricom to intervene to ensure the region has fair access to markets one of the big challenges that <clears throat> we're having right now is not even so much the availability of the raw materials it's just getting it to the markets it's not unique to Barbados, it's across the region. Um, as the major trade blocks like Europe and North America, South America and Asia, they take up a lot of the vessel capacity. So that vessel capacity then in smaller markets like our own strength. So you find a situation where you have fewer vessels serving the markets than, than they used to have. Uh, so that's one thing that we would like to see the CARICOM as a whole try to have a solution for it because it's not just a Barbados problem, it's a Caribbean problem. Small island states across the world are, are having this challenge and you need a way of you know, making sure that you can get your products, either the raw materials to you or your products out to your customers on time. The president of the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Jean Leon, says the region needs a more holistic approach to development and he suggests this should entail more strategic partnerships between countries, the private sector, external investors and multilateral development finance institutions. He was speaking during the president's chat at the bank's 52nd meeting on the topic, Innovative Financing for Sustainable Development, What Can Multilateral Development Banks Do? Now, to be able to do that, I think there have to be three key facilitators. Uh, those facilitators have to be embracing a digital um, transformation in everything we do, because it will be part of living in the 22nd, 21st and 22nd centuries. Uh, second, we need to address what I think is the Achilles heel of the, of the region over the last uh, 50 years solving our implementation capacity deficit problem. And the third is embracing and wrapping all of this in a concept of a strong uh, governance. And governance here, we are referring to the ability to make decisions in a very sound way based on evidence and strong institutional frameworks. Regional and international news is coming up after this short break. Cure oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over 1 billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge, from strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news in Guyana, government will be stepping up action to tackle a rise in violence at school. Word of this from Minister of Education Priya Manitchan after a student was found with an air gun inside his backpack at one secondary school this morning. So, you know, we have been getting more and more complaints in across across the country some schools are um, <clears throat> more frequent getting sending in complaints more frequently than others and we are very sure that this is not the education system that we're going to foster and tolerate we cannot have one or two or ten children hold any school to ransom and it is not going to happen so i'm encouraging parents to um, check on your children know what's in their bags check on them know who they're liming with know who they're hanging out with know what kind of friends they have and we are going to put some tough measures in place including um for for the particular school we're going to hold a pta and <clears throat> that is just one of the measures but in that pta if the parent doesn't come we are not going to accept the child back in school that doesn't mean we leave them to stray on the street Further afield, trade and economic growth are expected to be high on the agenda as leaders from the Americas and the Caribbean meet in Los Angeles. Many trade experts say Latin America and the Caribbean will benefit from shortening U.S. supply chains. This week's Summit of the Americas takes place amid continuing global supply chain problems, which President Joe Biden will address at the Port of Los Angeles on Friday. 
this is really a spectacular golden opportunity. Economic policy analysts say the solution to those problems lies in a concerted effort to shift manufacturing and shipping away from Asia to neighbors of the U.S., the so-called friendshoring of supply chains. We could be talking about several millions of jobs that could move into those countries linked to supply chains, and that would be transformative in those economies. But unlinking the existing supply chain would not be easy. Will require both the hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. And what do I mean by soft infrastructure? Governments, the policy, the trade policies would have to align to adopt the new ways of looking at things. Relations between the U.S. and countries like Mexico, whose president has decided not to attend the summit, are tense. Even if the political goodwill for more trade integration could be found, the job of building a vast industrial infrastructure and port facilities would take many years and hundreds of billions of dollars. But if friendshoring were realized, it would have benefits far beyond improving the fragile supply chain. It could reduce poverty and migration, curtail criminal gangs and narcotics trafficking. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on our Zoom Media Bus Terminals, as well as Queen Play at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.